And welcome back to News On. Former President Donald Trump, uh, appearing on Newsmax on the topic of Afghanistan, said, quote, unfortunately, they gave us some of what I had rebuilt. We rebuilt. They gave it to the Taliban. And joining us live to discuss this and more is CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, attorney and Democratic strategist Ken Altshuler, and finally, former Obama campaign director and mayoral candidate for Tucker Georgia Robin Byro. Thank you all for joining us. It's a jam-packed panel today. So before I get your response to that, I want to play a segment from when you were on the show, Robin, when we went over the billions of dollars we practically handed over to the Taliban and your response to that question. Let's take a look. In total, the U.S. government has spent an estimated $83 billion of taxpayer money on weapons, vehicles, and airplanes for the Afghan military. Adding to that list, a federal audit found that detailed up to $200 million worth of drones that just disappeared, along with 600,000 infantry weapons, 162,000 pieces of communication equipment, and 16,000 night vision goggle devices. This coming from our news partners at Just the News. Robin, that's a lot. It is a lot, and unfortunately, that's it happens. Unfortunately, it happens, but you said you don't agree with it. Obviously, the former president doesn't agree with it. Uh, do you still feel that way? Oh, yes. I, I, look, I'm a veteran Army Ranger. I did two tours in Afghanistan. I saw the gross mismanagement of resources and funds, uh, lots and lots of wasted equipment, wasted materials, wasted supplies, things that just went missing, weren't accounted for and written off by the federal government. There's a massive amount of waste, frankly, with the military industrial complex. I think we can agree on that across party lines that that uh, there's just not much accounting. I will say that since that segment, Miranda, I have learned that we did as we were trained to do as, as soldiers and service members, uh, and we tried to destroy as much equipment as we could that, we, that had to be left behind. I was relieved to hear about that. They did follow the protocol and remove key components of that equipment so that it's not, be, it's not able to be used by the Taliban. But we have seen some of those images, Ken, on social media with them showing off uh, this equipment and, and the weapons that we've left behind, even if we did get some of it still. I mean, $83 million is not chump change. And meanwhile, you, you know, Ken, you have the president going around doing these tours. As I mentioned, he's delivering a press briefing, talking to labor unions. He's talking about climate change. He's talking about COVID and unveiling a new plan. Uh, they're still talking about the infrastructure bill. They're still talking about this reconciliation package. They're still talking about money, emergency funds being used to relocate these refugees. That's a lot of money. And then when you hear about that, I mean, wh where is all this coming from? And is this just a mere distraction? Always had. I remember when we used to argue about $750 hammers that the, uh, that the military was buying on a routine basis. That being said, this is part of what happens in a war. And I do, I, I'm forced to remind people that Donald Trump had four years to wind down the war, to get people from the embassy down, back to home, to get those weapons out of there. Instead, he sets a deadline of May 1st, and he releases 5,000 prisoners. So... Uh, it's a little disingenuous for Donald Trump to be criticizing Joe Biden. Now, what I do criticize Joe Biden for is not foreseeing the Taliban strength of taking over the country. That he should have seen. I think he had the intelligence to see it. That's on him. And I'm not going to deflect. Joe Biden handled this badly. But for, to, for Donald Trump to criticize Joe Biden about this is silly. And you're right, Miranda. It is somewhat of a distraction. But I will say again. I don't see Afghanistan being a huge issue in the election. People in America are tired of it. They don't want to hear about it anymore. COVID is a much more serious issue, which is why I think Joe Biden is focusing on that as a deflection to Afghanistan, but it's a less of a worry to him. I want to get into prisoners in a moment, but Melissa, you're the number girl on this show, probably more so than anybody, uh, considering what you do for a living. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, before we've had you on to talk about New York and you were and your area was deeply impacted because of Hurricane Ida. 
The president was there yesterday touring New Jersey and New York, where he was greeted with the middle finger and, and booze. Um, so going back to what Ken said, um, he's saying that this is, yes, a deflection, but he thinks in the long run that this is what Americans uh, care about the most. Do you agree with that assessment? And what do you think about all this big spending um, that he's still trying to tout? And he's actually using climate change, using what happened in your state uh, to try to get more climate change policies passed. I think that the spending that the government is looking to do is astronomical. In fact, the market fell today uh, because it came out that they're looking, Janet Yellen came out and said they'd have to raise a debt ceiling. We're already at 22 trillion. Why not go to 30 trillion? Why not go to 50 trillion? These numbers are out of control. If they just gave a check of, for $40,000 for every household in America, that would be the same as passing that 4.5 trillion stimulus plan. I say they give everybody a check in the country. This is ridiculous. The government is about waste, waste, waste. As far as talking about climate change, I don't think that climate change is the reason that we have hurricanes, we have tornadoes, we have storms. We're going to have storms no matter what. That's the ecosystem that we live in. That's the planet Earth. As far as what's going on with Afghanistan and uh, Biden, what, the Biden administration wanting to turn the page, I don't think Americans are going for it. It's already been a week past the, the date that we've been out. We're already past the holiday weekend and people are still talking about it. People are upset. In fact, Biden was booed yesterday uh, when he went to New York because people didn't want to hear um, about what was going on with the hurricane. They're upset that they left Americans behind. I think when you hear the stories about people being still stranded there and that they can't get clearance to, to take off, and they're not getting the clearance from the Secretary of State or whatever, whoever is giving the clearance, Millie, whoever it is, that's a problem. No one's really digging into it. What are we doing about the people that are left there? Why do we bring all these right. refugees over there, hundreds of thousands of them, or whatever the total is now? Not all of those people helped us over there in Afghanistan. And where are they putting the people? They're going to spread them out. Then we're going to end up covering all the costs for those, just adding to the debt. We pay for it. The taxes are going to go up once they pass this trillion dollar plan. And you know it's going to pass anyways because the, they have the Democrats have control. They have control in the House. They have control in the Senate. They've got the president. I mean, they've got it all. And as far as what Ken was saying about Trump, listen, Trump probably thought he was going to win. Trump probably thought he was going to win. He thought he had time starting January to May to try to wind it down. They were already winding down it, though. They already got people out in 2020. They were slowly getting more troops out even before the election. So I think Trump thought he'd have time to wind it down. And I don't know what would have happened if Trump was still president, but maybe that some of the terms were not met. The Afghanistan, the Taliban, some of the terms weren't met. And I think Biden reacted really quickly in trying to, to get everybody out there by that deadline or before 9-11. Which, which is coming up this Saturday. And I think that to say that he did a good job with that, to say that Americans are gonna forget that, they're just not, particularly since 9-11 is coming up in a few days. Yeah, in just a few days. Um, not to mention, you talked about uh, resettling them. We talked about the Biden administration is asking Congress to shell out $6.4 billion uh, to resettle them. I wanna get, when we come back from the, the break, Robin, I want to get your reaction uh, to what Ken said and what Melissa said about the Americans that are still left behind um, and that these private entities are going out. These, these veterans that you've worked alongside are going out, not the Biden administration, going out on their own to get these people out. And then I also want to go to the, the topic that, um, Ken, that you brought up talking about prisoners because I want to take a look at the new Taliban gov uh, government. You may recognize a few of those faces uh, when we return, and that has some people pretty upset and concerned. Again, Melissa, we are just a couple of days um, from September 11th, so we're going to get all of you to react to that when we come back. Uh, you're watching News On. We're going to have more about that. Also, the concern that people have when it comes to 9-11. Obviously, anyone who was alive then, uh, we will never ever forget that day here's the interesting thing how safe do you feel a new poll shows that that number is dwindling we're going to discuss that more with our panel you're watching news on we'll be right back with ken melissa and robin when we return <laughs> 